Welcome. Uh, my name is Sharon Jobody, and I am the Vice President of Human Resources with the Ontario Centers of Excellence. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to um, this afternoon's Innovation Partners presentations. Um, th there will be a number of organizations this afternoon that we would like to introduce you to who are partners in the in innovation space here in Ontario. Um, either is each, uh, each is either a department, an agency of the provincial or federal government. Um, or they receive funding from the government. So together they offer innovative, and uh, they offer innovators and entrepreneurs a variety of programs, opportunities, and advice to help them develop their research and their businesses. So our first presentation this afternoon will be from the Federal Economic Development Agency, or FedDev, for Southern Ontario. Our presenter is Terrace Hollier, Director of Program Policy and Innovation. FedDef Ontario acts as a co-investor, delivery agent, and convener, and champion with Southern Ontario communities, businesses, not-for-profit organizations, and social enterprises to actively promote the region and build a strong foundation of long-term economic growth. So I'd like to turn it over to Terrace, and if you have any questions, there'll be some time after the presentation to, to ask some questions. So welcome. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you. And uh, thank you for coming out and uh, spending some time with me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come and spend time with people uh, who, uh, who are innovators. And uh, you can see up and down the hallways here at the conference today, uh, this is place is flush with innovation and innovators, and we're here to help. And we're here to leverage innovation and entrepreneurship uh, for Southern Ontario. So again, we're with the Federal Development Agency for Southern Ontario, otherwise known as FedDev. I just want to present you an overview. I'm not going to get into excruciating detail on each and every funding parameter that we have. I want to try and guide you to the nature of the program, what it's intended to do, target audience, a little bit about the money because we all want to know about that, of course, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Just first a little bit about from where we came from. In 2009, we were um, formed, and since then, we've been busy. We've achieved the following results, almost about a 1.2, just over 1 billion in funding provided to businesses, uh, post-secondary institutes, and all the stakeholders uh, that we felt was necessary to uh, accelerate uh, the Southern Ontario economy. More than 5,300 partnerships established. This is core for what we did. We needed to say that we need to leverage, not just fund one-off one, but we needed to leverage uh, partnerships, and we've done that. Uh, we leverage ratio every 260, uh, for every one dollar invested. So when we invest the dollar in Southern Ontario, Southern Ontario turns back and uh, generates two dollars and sixty cents worth of benefit. Uh, we've also, over our time, development of industrial and regional benefits teams. So not just program money, but we offer some services as well where we can take Southern Ontario companies with prime contractors in the defense industry and aerospace. You can meet them, look at their specs and see if there's a way to uh, service them as well as delivery of national infrastructure programs throughout Ontario, and those are famous as well, the Building Canada Fund and, and whatnot. So from splash pads to spaceships, uh, that's what we kind of do. Guiding principles I won't go too much into. We are client focused. We, want to, we, we try our best to reduce administrative burden for clients. We try to be our streamlined. We're not the, the largest agency in the federal system, but we like to think we're one of the more productive and uh, certainly one of the more, most friendly. Uh, we like to do things that align with priorities of our other partners and other stakeholders in the innovation and economic development spaces. We like to maximize our agency investments and leverage them with other uh, uh, initiatives as well. And we co-invest as well, third-party delivery uh, and also encouraging stakeholders to collaborate. Um, that's our role. I won't go too much into our role, but our context is there. Uh, so we've been busy, over about, oh, just over a billion over 5,000 partnerships, uh, $1 invested to 260 in, in benefit. Uh, that gave us a new mandate, amongst other things. So we now have a new mandate. Uh, in Economic Action Plan 2013, we got $920 million in new agency funding. So we're open for business. We were open for business since officially for our programming funding since December 2013. We are taking applications for everything that I will speak to today. Uh, constantly until we have all the funds committed. 
and we're going to keep doing this. We have an, um, our mandate until 2019. We're going to chug along. Um, so out of that 920 million, three general areas that we were invested. Number one, the Southern Ontario Prosperity Initiatives. This is our mainline initiatives. I'll talk to you a little bit about them. They're the investing in business innovation. I'll talk to you later about the parameters on that. Investing in business growth and productivity. Investing in regional diversification. And investing in commercialization partnerships. So it's a broad spectrum of what we're trying to achieve here with our stakeholders. From the startup companies, the pre-revenues, to the expanding companies, to the not-for-profits and the industry associations that gather their industries to larger questions that uh, address productivity and competitiveness in their sectors. That's what we want to do. We also have the Advanced Manufacturing Fund and the Eastern Ontario Development Program as well. I won't be talking about that today though. The first two uh, classes. So out of those initiatives, they share a common bucket of $530 million over our mandate, and the Advanced Manufacturing Fund, $200 million over our mandate as well. So investing in business innovation. Before I talk about our Southern Ontario uh, Prosperity Initiatives, I want to say that in general how we fund things is that you're a company and we deal directly with you to transfer money to a for-profit company, that's a repayable contribution. Uh, you know, Good payment terms, good, shall we say, financing terms, so on and so forth, but they're repayable. If you're a not-for-profit, uh, they're non-repayable contributions. So I'll, I, this way, it sort of saves me time talking about this is non-repayable. I don't want to split it out in each and every in, uh, uh, initiative that I talk to today. So investing in business innovation, this is about that idea, that entrepreneur, this is about uh, that wants to take his or her invention and at least bring it over into the idea stage. It's also about the small startup business as well, the earlier stage in business, who want to take that and see if investors is attractive to investors and help them develop their innovation or their product or their service through the investor cycle successfully. And they're also about angel investors as well and angel networks who work with smaller companies and smaller angel investor caps. This has again two streams, the profit, the for-profit and the not-for-profit. Uh, if you're a not-for-profit and you're delivering those services to those entrepreneurs, such like we see in RICS, we see them in incubators, accelerators, community futures development corporations, we see them outside of the cities in the rural areas, uh, and you're delivering uh, services to entrepreneurs, that's something that we can do to help you keep delivering and expand or adapt new tools to help your clientele accelerate to closer to revenue. If you're an early stage business, you're a Canadian incorporated, uh, you're headquartered in southern Ontario, and you're employing less than 50 full-time positions. You're a small kind of pre-revenue investment stage company. And, or if you're an angel work network and your regional organizations as well. So that's very important to know. Uh, for not-for-profits, it's really, uh, you can go up to $20 million for, pro for your per project if you want to do and uh, if you want to uh, service your customers. So we, we do expect and we do understand that there will be large scale cross-regional projects amongst stakeholders that might be uh, useful. Uh, this one again, 100% uh, of your not-for-profits expenses are covered. They're non-repayable, but you have to do 50% matching with your entrepreneurs that you, uh, you, you work with. Early stage companies, this is from the old IBI, the, nothing's really changed there, as have the angel organizations other than a little bit more uh, money there. Investing in business growth and productivity, you are a company that's established, you have a track record of profitability, you want to expand into a market, you want to diversify the market, you want to be more productive, or you're a not-for-profit serving industries trying to address productivity issues within your sector. Uh, again, if you're a company, $20 million per project, we're, 20, we're in for 25% of that. So our $20 million, up to $20 million, goes up to 25% of matching. If you're a not-for-profit, again, up to $20 million, uh, again, with 50% matching from your, the industry that you work with. Uh, investing in commercialization partnerships, this is the old technology development program. For those of you who know FedDev from our 1.0, our previous iteration. And this is really to increase the capacity of existing and emerging ecosystems to promote, pri to promote 
promote, promote excuse me, private sector collaboration with not-for-profits that are uh, working in these ecosystems, help clusters develop through technology development, through cluster development, and a number of other plays. And this is all not-for-profit through post-secondary institutions located in Southern Ontario or other not-for-profits that are capable of doing these cluster and managing these cluster plays. Again, that's up to, that's up to 50%. 50% um, 20 million, 50% matching. Investing in regional diversification. This is again, you want to enhance business attraction, strengthen regional businesses clusters, improve communities in facing distress, look at regional assets and build them together in your region to be more of a business friendly climate. This is more of the traditional, uh, but we want you to advance to the next level, economic development in the region. So you're an organization, you're a not for profit, and uh, you have a mandate for economic development. Right? Everyone has a mandate, but you have actually a, someone voted your board that your mandate is actually statutory economic development. 50%, 50% cash, right? The advanced manufacturing fund is the final one. Uh, this is again, this is unique in the sense that this we are delivering for all of Ontario, not just Southern Ontario. What I've talked to you about is our catchment area in Southern Ontario. This, the Advanced Manufacturing Fund, is for all of Ontario, the north, the south, east, the west, the up, the down, everything. Uh, and this is really to support large-scale, incremental, transformative projects, uh, technology adoption and adaptation, allowing, uh, again, allowing sectors and individual companies to diversify, to, to adapt and expand their advanced manufacturing uh, activities, help them diversify markets, help them participate better in value chains in the global perspective as well, be a better player and more productive as well. There's for-profit and not-for-profit uh, eligible. Again, if you're a firm that's manufacturing and R&D in, in, in Ontario, you're, you're, you're eligible. If you're undertaking manufacturing in Ontario but not r and d you can still qualify for AMF money. It helps you uh, attract that research mandate into uh, or better expertise into your company and into the region. Uh, and if you're conducting R&D but not manufacturing, well, that means you're the innovation organization of a larger chain and you want to retain and expand your uh, leadership position in that global chain. And so that's what we want. Uh, again, for companies, um, it starts at 10 million per project because you have to be larger scale and trans normally uh, 10 million, we say that. Up to 50%, $20 million and 50% cash. For not-for-profits, it's the same thing, same parameters, but it's not repayable. Uh, whereas for, again, for large companies it is. Um, not-for-profits though are partnership with an anchor firm. There has to be an anchor firm that brings in an ecosystem, a supply chain, a value chain in with it, companies and so on and so forth, for it uh, to be uh, considered an attractive uh, instrument for the AMF. It's a unique feature actually because it does, I have to actually talk a little bit more on the parameters of AMF because it is unique. Again, it's for all of Ontario. Uh, we're taking applications now. They're, as soon as they're assessed and they're complete, we can do a full assessment of them. There's no waiting and batching or anything. You get it in, we assess it. Uh, there's two intakes uh, from December well, to this October. We take a break, finish up our assessments and approval, do a little bit of uh, valuation, and then we do it again in intake 2015. Should there be a little bit more money left over after that? Maybe there's a third intake. I doubt it. but. It's very popular already. All of Ontario, and there's interdepartmental collaboration. We will be, and I'll talk about this, there are three key assessment criteria, amongst others, in the AMF, and that is your market relevance, your innovative nature, and the economic spin-offs. This really is about those three. Industry Canada and their sector groups are helping us with those, they're actually helping us with those three uh, assessments, providing them to us. So it's a, it's, it's a partnership, really collaboration between us, as well as FedNOR is involved in helping us uh, get better projects out of the north as well. Certainly cross-regional uh, collaboration as well is very important under this. So north-south collaboration, wherever it's led, cross-regional, cross-sectoral is really good. Um, and so that's where Industry Canada plays with us as well. Any questions? Like you can read, we have a website, we've got brochures, we've got people in our FedDev booth number 802. We've got some comms people there. Put up your hand there so you can start with our comms people and there's some of our uh, managers as well. I think Mark might be here, the manager of the AMF. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, that's that. Uh, so certainly happy to take them 
either now in the allotted time or when I'm out on the floor as well. Thank you. Hi, how are you doing? So I'm here representing um, a social incubation enterprise. Um, I'm here also representing a university that's engaging students in experiential learning opportunities. And we're working with um, the Community Innovation Lab within the Durham region on developing social, on, social enterprises, essentially. And I think the misconception behind social enterprises is there's no, actually, there's no financial return. Um, so my question is, how would an, or, sorry, uh, an incubator that is trying to obtain funding to sort of expand their initiatives or a university trying to collaborate, like how would they go about sort of applying for these fundings if, or sort of changing the perception behind social enterprises? Well, I think we're open to taking social enterprises. You'll see in our 1.0 in our first iteration, very much about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It still is a driver and will still be primarily engaging that. But social enterprises, I think we've realized that uh, that's an area we've not yet tapped. And so for if you're an incubator and you want to keep providing services to social entrepreneurs, help them uh, grow and expand and basically mature their social entrepreneurs, you'd go through IBI, our IBI, Thank amongst you. other things. I mean, if you're stuck, we can help you talk to our other partners. There's also the concierge service over here, about 40, 50 programs that they have on their list that can actually help. So, you know, social enterprises are now recognized as being valued for economic development and any other they're real, really, um, you know, they've come a long way in, in the perception of a lot of people. Right. Thank you. Awesome. So congratulations, you're, on the end, you're at the beginning, something good. Yeah. Or at least we're at the beginning of something good. We're catching up to you. I think that's really more appropriate. Yes, there's a lady there. Hi. Um, just the information that you just presented, uh, are they easily accessible on the website? Yep, you can just click the program or click who you are and what you want to do and uh, there's a list right there. Um, you know, we have all of our guidelines published on the web, our applications on the web. Uh, you just need to go on it, click it, fill it out, it's all there. Uh, just a follow-up question on that because um, there are a lot of funding um, from different sources are there any thought uh, of integrating them into an easy access, um, like a database? Because uh, my company actually have mm. worked with consulting companies and paid fees to, um, to understand what are the funding opportunities and what programs fit into right, the structure. Right. Just wonder, you know, in, in fact, there are, there are a number of really good resources. The agency operates Canada Business Ontario, uh, which is our call center slash human center where you can talk to people and actually say, this is my need. And they will act, take you through a number of, pro, of uh, programs that, that, they, that they help pathfind for you. So this is federal and provincial within Canada Business Ontario. It's a joint uh, effort there. FedDev Ontario runs that. And we actually have CBO um, colleagues at our desk at 802 as well. Uh, the other thing is the concierge service right here, which is more of an innovation play just across. NRC, uh, or sorry, the NRCI RAP has launched that. And they have, again, it's about 40, right, Manny? Or how many programs that they have? I heard about 40. Yeah, so at the moment, it's around 40. So it's only going to get better, and it's, it's not a cent. It's just your time. So, and they're just about like 20 feet away from you. So they're, so again, you're at the beginning of something great. So I'm glad you've asked that because a lot of companies do have that problem. Um, and you can go to an IRAP ITA as well, call IRAP and say, this is my problem and, and they'll be helpful. You know? We Thank all want to help. Thank right? you. Yeah. All right, so if anyone else has any questions, I'll be wandering here and just nearby, and so you can ask me after, after everyone else talks. All right, take care. Thank you, Terrace, for that uh, presentation. So our next presentation uh, this afternoon will be from the National Research Council, or NRC, and uh, our presenter is Manfred Hubert. He is the director Ontario, St. Clair, um, St. Clair Region for the NRC's Industrial Research Assistance Program, or IRAP, as you may know it. 
Um, the NRC is the Government of Canada's premier research and technology organization. Working with clients and partners, they provide innovation, support, strategic research, and scientific and technical services. Um, there will also be some opportunity for questions. So I just want to call Manfred up. Here you are. So I just turned to green here for my slides. Okay. Well, thank you for that introduction, and I'm glad you said that introduction about NRC because I can skip a couple of slides that way. So I'm not going to go through this. I am representing NRC, National Research Council, and of course IRAP is a program of the National Research Council. So, and whereas NRC is really focusing on, you know, both of us are, it's a national program, we deliver IRAP, that program is delivered locally. So I'm involved with the Ontario section, but we have five regions across Canada. Uh, you know, Atlantic, Quebec, Ontario, West, and Pacific. So I want to talk more about IRAP than I want to talk about NRC, but I don't want to misrepresent and not take the time to talk about NRC itself. Uh, as you know, NRC has gone through a, a, a large transition, and uh, you know, NRC's vision really is to become the most effective research and technology organization in the world, stimulating sustainable domestic prosperity. So, you know, it's different than they were a research organization. They are now sort of following IRAP's lead and they're working a lot more closely with companies. And of course, IRAP's vision is a little different, but in the same area. We want to be the first place where innovative Canadian companies or firms go to support for support to develop ideas into commercial success. So I think commercial success is also something which differentiates us from the, the SHRED program, which is important for Canada, but where, where they don't worry really about whether there is ultimate commercialization, which they hope there is, we certainly make that a prime factor. Oh, let's get away from here. So there you see we're part of the all the different businesses, strategic research and development at NRC, technical services, IRAP, and, uh, infra and uh, science infrastructure. So they still run the telescope and things like that. So really the NRC IRAP business model, I think, is, is somewhat important and it differentiates us again because we think of it as the ITA advantage. I mean, we have, you know, local presence, we build relationships, we have a network across the country. We invest dollars in labor pool, but we have the ITAs, the Industrial Technology Advisors, and these are people that in most cases have had a number of years of technical and business experience, and they work closely with companies and try and guide you, mentor you, fund you. There's many different things, and that's different than sort of, you know, accessing a website and getting an application and then waiting for a response or something. I think it's an important thing to remember. So when we provide and we try and develop a trusting relationship with the client, we don't sign NDAs or anything, but in essence, if we were to broadcast some of your trade secrets, we wouldn't be in business. And we've been in business for 50 years now. So we're very good at that. We provide advice and customized solutions. So we, you know, we're, we're looking at the company and we work with you individually, not just as some generic group or a sectoral group. We provide networking opportunities. We're now also engaged in international linkages. And we develop project management because being part of an IRAP program and if you're part of a funded program, you have to develop a discipline because you will get audited and you have to demonstrate certain things and I think in general most companies are actually very appreciative of some of the things that the processes that they have to go through which aren't always fun but they're useful. And we do have constant follow-up so we may not be engaged in a project with you this year but the ITA should still be visiting you and find out how your business is doing, what are your needs, how can we help you. Of course we probably wouldn't be able to do any of the things we do without having the ability to give financial support. So we do give financial support. 
and our financial support is in the form of a non-repayable contribution. And so we have contributions which go to firms, companies, for-profit companies. Uh, they have to be really, they have to be incorporated. That's really the only stipulation in terms of getting uh, direct financial support. But there are other factors which will determine whether you will actually get supported or not. We also make contributions to non-profit non organizations. Uh, we, have, we administer on behalf of Human, Re Human Resource Canada, sorry, uh, the Youth Employment Program, whereby if you hire a college graduate or a university graduate uh, for basically his first job, but doing what he was trained to do, in other words, if he's a software developer, he develops software, he doesn't build computers or something like that. So we provide a, f uh, it really depends on how much money we have available. This year, it's $15,000 for six months. And we also administer the Canadian HIV Technology Development Program. This is a joint program with the Gates Foundation and the Government of Canada. And what I want to talk about a little bit more this year is a new program which is called BIAP, or the Business Innovation Access Program, which some of you may have heard about. And this is the background from this, that this was announced in the last federal budget, where um, it was supposed to provide 20 million over three years to help small and medium-sized enterprise access research and business development services at universities, colleges, and other non-profit research institutions. So it's a little different because in general we, many of the companies we don't, don't necessarily work with research and colleges or not-for-profit, but this is to stimulate activities between industry and, and those. The idea is also to commercialize, to help small and medium-sized enterprises commercialize their products or services more quickly and effectively. So an overview of BAP, it's okay, it's an NRC IRAP program designed to help Canada's SMEs commercialize new products, services, and process more quickly. BAP will provide SMEs with non-repayable funding to help pay for research, technology, business development, services at universities, colleges, or other nonprofit research institutions. And BAP will run from March 31st, 26th will run to March 31st, 2016, investing $10 million per government year for $20 million total. That's for all of Canada, mind you, okay, it's not Ontario. And Ontario roughly gets about one-third of that funding. So the distinctive features of BIA are total IRAP contribution up to $50,000 to be used to pay only for contractor services. So it's IRAB pays up to 75% of the contractor cost. So basically, if you have a contract or you want to do something with a university college, they have to provide a proposal. It's going to cost X dollars to do this. They have to provide you with information. What are they doing? What process or what, so, uh, what problem are they trying to solve for you or what measurement are they trying to make for you? And all of the work is all, like BAP, BAP is accessed through ITAs and it comes from the company. So we don't talk to the college, whatever it is. The college talks to the company, the company talks to us. The project can be up to one year long. Project work is so it's technical or business services to accelerate a firm's commercialization efforts around an innovative product. Contractor, contractor must be, to be eligible, must be a credit university, college, nonprofit research institution receiving publicly financial support, or if necessary, a government lab. It could be NRC itself. Some of their services could be used. Okay, continued here. If it involves intellectual property, it probably isn't a BAP. So BAP shouldn't really involve any issues with intellectual property. Contractor costs only, we won't don't pay for a contractor's capital costs, which usually isn't a problem. Service standard, if we we, have fifth, we usually will process it once we get the application. It'll be signed off, sealed, and delivered to you and ready to go within 15 business days. And you're permitted, a company's permitted one technical and one business BAP per year. 
okay? And uh, the kind of things that we support in it are product optimization, specialized testing, process development analysis optimization, market research, marketing or business strategy development, competitive analysis. Okay, just quickly, uh, I mentioned that we have international programs. We're tuned into Eureka. So therefore, if you have a project where you may have a partner, which is, say, in Europe, uh, you can apply for an international project whereby the European partner will be paid through Eureka in Europe and a, a Canadian partner will be paid through the IRAP program. Okay, the clientele, well, just to give a quick idea, we cover all industry sectors. You can see a big spike for ICT, but we cover manufacturing, so it really doesn't matter what your business is, we, we pretty well probably are involved in it. And what is our impact? Well, you know, studies have shown that IRAP, for every dollar we put in, it creates $10 of revenue for a firm, and you know, for every dollar that IRAP contributes, there's a $12 in economic impact. And typically we have about, we support about 8,500 high quality jobs are supported every year. These are studies that are done and uh, you know, take it as it is. Now the one thing I forgot, there is a national number or a number that you can get to access IRAP and it's not on here. And I didn't make this presentation, it comes from National Why they didn't put that on, but it's a one 877 9944727. So if you call that number, then you'll be connected to an ITA, and an ITA will have to respond to you within 48 hours. May not meet with you directly, but he has to respond either by email or by telephone. Okay? Thank you. That's it. Any. Uh, do I have time for questions? If there's any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. Hi, I'm Monica from Oquette University. So the application for the BAP, is it made by the university or by the SME? The SME and the application goes directly to you and then do they name the university? Oh, included in their proposal. Is there a form online that you could? God. Okay, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a process and there's a proposal template and everything like that. Online. Okay. So, so the company, when they talk to their ITA and they say, look, we're interested in doing BPAP, he'll provide BAP, he'll provide all the information to you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you.